Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, we always start with our uh, beginning uh, with debrief on uh, Victoria's test takers, what they've encountered. And uh, that's why we'll start today. If you're new, that's how we start. We end with a drawing for a 30 minute coaching call with live Q&A and uh, fun and fellowship in between the uh, start of the hour and the end of the hour. So let us know uh, what series exam you are taking, uh, where you're joining us from. If you have a question, it'd be helpful if in the chat you put a cue next to it and tell us what exam it is, because that kind of helps us uh, pull it out of the chat from like people are just talking to each other, what the case may be. So uh, just uh, that would be helpful. All right, let's start with some series seven uh, debrief. We had a uh, some real good debrief. Some of the stuff is uh, stuff we expect to see, so nothing new. Um, but, you know, there's little esoteric things that you can sometimes miss. And one of those things is a business development company that is testable. It's a type of closed-in funds that makes investments in developing and financial distress firms. So, you know, there'd be heightened su suitability for somebody who wants to buy a business development company. It's, I think of it as retail kind of venture capital kind, not venture capital, but, you know, distressed securities. Usually you would have to access that through a, 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 a private equity distressed hedge fund or something like that. And not everybody has access to that. And then uh, somebody said they saw a seven, which is surprising to me. I see this a lot on the 24, but a green shoe, uh, they were asked about a green shoe. green shoe. Green shoe allows me as a banker to expand the deal. So, you know, I'm offering 10 million shares and it's oversubscribed, you know, in this case, IPO stands for instant profit opportunity. <laughs> and so what I want to be able to do is say to my good customer, no problem, I'll get you some stock. And so my $10 million example, 10 million share, excuse me, I could get another million and a half shares from the issuer. What I do is short it to the customer and then I would get it back from the issuer. Uh, I think more of a 24, but they said they saw it on the seven. I agree with them. If I think on the seven, I would think it'd be just a definitional question at, at most. What do you think, Brian? Any comments on the green shoe? Yeah, I've heard it a few times recognition. on the seven. Yeah, it's called the green shoe just for your own edification trivia because the green shoe manufacturing company was the first person who did this type of a deal. Now it's part of a Wolverine. Woo -hoo. Um, this other one I just got today, and it's uh, nothing out of the ordinary in terms of what you could expect. Uh, backing away, remember, is when you fail on our firm quote. Um, uh, currency transaction reports, suspicious activity reports. Uh, I like this one, a uh, covered call on a retirement plan. I, I don't think that's really the main point, but you have to, if you're going to do an opening sale of any kind, you need a margin account. The only exception to that is if you're doing an opening sale in a, a call contract and you own the underlying, the stock. So yeah, that makes sense since you can only do it in a cash account. Well, you know, retirement accounts are cash accounts. So that makes sense. Churning, no surprise. Parity, can't be fumbling around with parity, ADRs. These are all high risk. Oh, here's one. Euro car exporter gets paid in dollars. So I'm BMW and I'm selling cars in the US. And so I'd be afraid that the dollar is going to go down, being the euro is going up and I'd buy calls of the euro. I think that's more of an SIE, but you know, like people say they see another seven. You know, I believe them. Uh, feasibility study doesn't go to geo bonds. Feasibility study is a revenue bond. Make sure you can distinguish between geos and revenues. That's a big part of the exam. I am teaching a muni, uh, municipal bond uh, course tomorrow, 5.30 p.m., $45. If you uh, miss it, it'll be available for free on a replay. But, you know, you should take a sheet of paper and fold it in half and on one side write all the terms associated with GOs and the others, all the terms associated with revenues. Uh, always get, disclose yield to call, right? That's an MSRB rule, very testable. So some of this stuff is stuff that you shouldn't be surprised about. I know about you, when I take a test, I like to get to the first question. I actually, I know the answer to it. I go, ooh, you know, something on this test I actually know. Now, if you are fortunate enough to have Brian's practice exams, that won't be too long before you see a question that you say, oh my God, that looks very much like a test key question. All right, okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, the other thing that's been showing up, again, margin is only three or four questions. I wouldn't get too hung up, but somebody saw a mixed margin account and if you get a mixed margin account, what you need to know is the classical margin equation long, long market value minus debit equals equity. 
credit register, cash, minus short market value, equity. Remember this from grade school? You can combine like things. So you can combine equity, for example. And so, uh, you know, that I think that would be the, the, the extent of it. I mean, uh, all test prep vendors go way overboard on margin, both in numbers of performance opportunities, overweighted for sure, and complexity. Uh, test a little more straightforward. 65, 66, you know, angels weep for you. If you miss questions, we tell you we're there. So I always, when somebody tells me, what's a quadro? Part of me wants to say, well, you didn't do your work because you should have known that. But, you know, uh, you, you know, you got, can't be missing questions uh, like this. Anyways, this person didn't know what this was. Still, they passed. Good news. That's a qualified domestic relations order. It's very testable. And it's an order from a judge in a, a breakup, a divorce, telling the custodian to distribute uh, pension assets to the former spouse. All right. I just told you I'm doing a class tomorrow, Municipal Bonds. If you want to join me, you can do so. Remember, we have free, uh, free some free stuff. The free stuff is capped. So tonight we have an overtime Zoom session. It's capped at 10. We've reached at 10. And so that means if you went there, it wouldn't show up because it's no longer available. Uh, we just had somebody sign up for a couple Tuesdays out. It's not offered all the time. So not only are the classes there, but you can also uh, find some free stuff. If you are a paid student of one of my evening, Wednesday evening classes, you get free repeats and you are allowed in, even like tonight, the overtime session is capped. It's not if you're a paid student. At the end of our calls, we uh, do our drawing for a 30-minute coaching call. That call is recorded and shared as a replay. You can assign it. You can share it. You can do with it what you will. If you are the winner at the end of our hour, then you need to send me an email within one hour of the drawing saying, hey, I'm the winner. And I will send you a confirmation of that uh, invite. On the channel, the uh, channel's got almost 400 videos. You don't want to be looking for videos. That's, you know, that's just going to, it's like a needle in a haystack. So what you want to do is find your series on the channel. And then, like SIE, we'll show you the videos. I don't know how to explain this any better, Brian. I say in suggested watch order. And then people call and say, well, which five should I watch first? <laughs> I say it's in suggested watch order. Yeah, which five? So please, you know, the channel is self-service. So, you know, there's like 70 videos. It's a buffet. Take what you like, leave what you don't. It is the best free supplement. In terms of paid supplements, you can see our friend there to the right, the Test Geek himself, Brian Lee, managing member, Test Geek Exam Prep LLC. He's been kind enough to give our viewers and subscribers 20% off on his paid supplements. It's basically a whole course on video as well as some quick notes. And I think most importantly, well, you know, it's all good, but those practice finals, man, I just love those because they give you a real strong correlation to the actual exam. So when anybody's struggling, Brian's been kind enough to let's have that on the channel for free where you can watch it, hit pause, answer. And I always tell people they haven't paid uh, Brian for that to go do that because that score really reflects what you can expect. The other thing I highly recommend is a Kaplan QBank. Uh, it's the best QBank out there. And with my Guru 10 discount code, you can get that for about 60 bucks. I also recommend the Kaplan uh, Quick Sheets. If you want to get a hold of Brian, that is uh, Brian's email. Uh, you can go right to his you know, website and buy. There's a link to his website where you can buy his stuff on the homepage. So you go to the homepage, there's links. Brian's one of them. You can hit that link and go right there if you want to check out his videos and all that stuff. He's also got some uh, teaser free stuff that's real good free stuff on YouTube as well. So you can check that out as part of your due diligence. And like I say, you can also send him a, an email. That's where you can check out his video courses. Okay, that's my email address. So let's get going here. Let's get into the chat and see what's happening. 66. All right, Shannon in Illinois. Woohoo. So that's a investment advisor representative. I always send people kudos when they pass their 65 or 66. Kudos, investment advisor representative. And they say, well, that's not what we call me at my firm. I go, I know it's a joke. You know, it's kind of, you know. All right. Thank you so much, Savannah. I love when Victoria's text takers join us like Savannah. You know, if you're not sure whether something's on your exam or not, one of the things that I've having Savannah and Victoria's test takers is I don't know why you wouldn't want to take Brian or my words for it. I mean, you know, we've been doing this for, for decades and helped thousands of people pass the test. But if you need reassurance, it's nice to have somebody like Savannah. Just earlier today, I told somebody about margin and it was nice that five Victoria's test takers. Yeah, I just did it. And I had what Dean said. All right, woo. You know, I don't think you need that affirmation, but it's it's always good, right? 
She did her first equity trade today. I still remember my first one. There you go. There you go. I won't tell you how many years ago. It oh was. man, I'm trying to remember. It feels so good. It really. I was does. talking to somebody the other day about how our job used to be kind of like people would dream of growing up to be stockbrokers. That's not so much anymore. No. But I was one of those people, so you know, I, I was uh, very impressed with myself, uh, which is easy. I'm easy, easily impressed myself. Uh, I don't work for a bank and I have no experience in banking or investments. Well, everybody's got to stop, stop, start somewhere, I mean, so I'm not sure. Do I qualify for others? No, you need a sponsor for anything beyond the SIE or the NASA exams. Yeah, Brian. 65. You can That's take right. Like NASA exams would be you're 63, you're 65, you're 66. Now, Abraham, you're 63 and you're 66 uh, won't work without a seven or a six. Uh, but the 60, or excuse me, the 65 works without any uh, other FINRA exam. What I mean by that is with a 65, you could work at a fee-based investment advisor and only have the 65. Uh, you might want to consider Abraham doing your SIE and then maybe trying to go for the 65 without sponsorship. Because I got to tell you, I would think, I'll ask what Brian thinks, but if I were a financial institution and you already walked in and you had an SIE and a 65, I'd go, oh, okay, well, I'm just rolling the dice on a on a six or a seven. What do you think? Do you think that's helpful, Brian, to have that on your resume? It, it is. Yeah. Uh, no doubt. Anything you have on a resume before you walk in, it's going to be helpful. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you might want to consider that after you get your SI. Do first things first. So I do think the order would be the SIE first. Yeah. Then I think the 65, because there will be a lot of overlap. So I wouldn't go 63, because unless you have a, a six or seven, that's kind of going to be a waste. And I wouldn't do the 66. So if you want to do as much as you can, Without a sponsor, I would recommend SIE and 65. Perfect. Well, par value bonds, Clyde, is how all bonds for test purposes are issued. It's an arbitrary number and it's a thousand. So once it's issued at par, it'll be trading in the secondary market at a discount or a premium. So I'm not sure what you mean by par value bonds. You would always assume that a bond was issued at par. And if we say it's at par, that means a thousand dollars. Another way we say that is 100, 100% 100 of par being 1,000. So um, I don't know. Can you add any more of that explanation? I think it's kind of dangling and a little bit. They are synonymous with the principal amount of the loan. Yeah. You know, that's what you're doing. When you're buying a bond, you're lending the, either the corporation, the municipality, or the U.S. government money, Clyde. You're a lender. Uh, I would tell you that it's we can be more helpful if you have that in the context of perhaps a question. Right. You know, if it's a Kaplan question, you can send me a QID and I can bring that up backstage and I make a little video explica explication for you. So that might be a little more helpful if we had some more information. But Clyde, you definitely need to know par for bonds is a thousand and you definitely need to know that par for preferreds is a hundred. The other reason, Clyde, that's so important is because if you don't know par is a thousand, you won't know the 8% bond means $80, right? Because that 8%, don't you love it, Clyde? It's like learning a foreign language. That 8% nominal yield, coupon, fixed or stated rate of return. <laughs> what will we say on the test? Whatever you're not prepared for. You need to know that 8% is based on par. So 8% times 1,000. If I get my calculator here and I take 1,000 times 8%, that tells me the bond pays me $80. Now, you also need to know that's going to be paid to you in two semi-annual payments. Definitely, you know, bonds pay semi-annually. If that's a preferred stock, that's why it's important a preferred stock, the par is 100, right? Because if it's a preferred stock, then I'm going to take my calculator, 100 times 8%, and I find out that pays me $8 per share annually, $2 quarterly. So I'm disappointed you need a calculator to do that. <laughs> people make fun of me including brian my arithmetic is not all that great so if somebody offers me a calculator glad i'm taking it um uh, years ago brian when i took the seven i've taken the seven back in the days you know uh, when they gave scores and the last time i took the seven i missed four questions and if i knew which they were i would petition and i thought well it's got to be some judgment question where they you know european exactly. import or whatever but then I was teaching Brian, I couldn't do the break even in like a long call. It was like 150 plus four. And I would put up like 156. And people said, Dean, 150 plus four isn't 156. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> somebody offers me a calculator. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. All right. Woohoo. You had a hellacious draw and you still got it. You got to be able to take down any draw. So 
Cynthia, thanks for showing up as a victorious test takers. I want to tell everybody, you need to overlearn this information. You got to overlearn it. You can't barely know it. You got to really know it because if you get one of those draws from hell, you got to be able to take it down. So, you know, if you get it, sometimes we'll go, man, Dean, it was easier than I thought. That's less likely than what Cynthia just said. But you got to be ready for any draw. So uh, you are certainly welcome, Cynthia. Uh, that is the, uh, I don't know for Brian, uh, he gets his paid supplements. I get, don't worry about me. I make money too. But what I do like about it is the psyche, uh, the emotional lift I get when helping people. That's right. So Cynthia, I had a little bit of a rough day today. I'm not a whiner. I'm a Marine. But somebody sent me some very nice comments. And I said, oh, thank you so much. Today they mean more than they usually mean to me. <laughs> so, wow. Candace, 24, general securities principal in the house. Uh, Candace, I don't know if it was you. We, You know, I like our, our Reddit communities because you can remain anonymous. Candace, particularly at 24, like we had somebody who was was talking about parking a registration, didn't realize that was a bad thing. So probably good that you know, we don't know who they are. And there was, somebody said they uh, cheated, Brian, and watched my Series 24 and 60 Minutes video. I tell you, you should only watch it the night before or the morning of. And they said they watched it 30 or 40 times. I don't know if that was Candace, but <laughs> there you go, a few hundred times. Might have been her. Might have been her. So kudos, Candace. That 24. That's not an easy one. Yeah, that's a real challenge. I call that babysitting sevens, babysitting sevens. Oscar, on to your seven. All right. Look at this. Man, uh, all this. I love it. Yes. Oh my goodness. The work you do, the work you do on your seven, Oscar, pays dividends on your seven. So there's a lot of overlap. It's got a lot more depth, a lot more options. But uh, you know, it's uh I always say the journey of three and oh begins with one and oh. So that's a great start. Well, Keynes. Well, let's just start, Nico. I, I'm assuming you're taking the SE, SE, uh, SIE. So let's start with some test questions there. Let me make a note here. 17 minutes in. Uh, on your SIE and your 65, it's very testable to know monetary policy is the money supply. And it's controlled by the Federal Reserve Board. The other thing you're held accountable for is fiscal policy. Fiscal policy, very testable, is government spending and taxation. This is very testable on the SIE and the 65. And Congress and the president control fiscal policy. Now, one of our famous economists is Lord John Maynard Keynes. You know, theory isn't true. Theory is a way of explaining things. And Mr. Keynes said when the business uh, cycle, the economy is weak, again, very testable, Two calendar quarters of uh, declining uh, GDP is a recession. And very testable, six calendar quarters of declining GDP is a depression. You know, gross domestic products are the total goods and services an economy produces. Uh, and that's how we measure the economy. You know, we have a business cycle. And Mr. Keynes said when the economy is weak, it's because there's no demand. Because people who have resources, hoard them, won't spend them. You know, other people don't have any resources. And so what Mr. Kane said is that the government should use fiscal policy to stimulate demand. In other words, uh, you know, step on the accelerator called government spending. For example, uh, one of my fam fa fa uh, favorite economists, a guy named Lawrence Summers, uh, you know, world's youngest uh, economics professor at Harvard, was president of Harvard. And he said, well, listen, I think the government uh, spent a little too much to stimulate demand. And now we have inflation. And so that's one of the Fed now is stopping in to try and dent demand to raising interest rates. And you are going to get tested on tools of the Fed. So, you know, I have two lectures on economics. I have one that's just a basic economics lecture. You know, I joke, Nico, if you want to sound smart and anybody ever asks you about economics, finance or investments, you want to sound smart, say it has a lot to do with interest rates. And if you just shut up, you sound good. People say, well, what about them? You say they fluctuate. They say, is that good news or bad news? You say it depends. Can you tell me more? Uh, I would definitely know about open market operations of the Fed. Uh, I would definitely know how uh, raising interest rates and lowering interest rates affect the money supply. I'm avoiding going into a 30-minute lecture. Anything briefly you want to add to that, Brian? No. <laughs> okay. So, Nico, I'll tell you what I'll do. What I usually do in these situations, I don't know if you're joining me for the overtime Zoom session, which I have a whiteboard and I do some things. If you are, you can ask me again there and I'll go into a little more depth. But I'll also link in the replays. I always timestamp the replays. So, if you go to this part of the replay, I'll put a link to that lecture on economics. And it's timestamps so you can find the economic stuff. 
Uh, people underestimate economics on 65, Nico. So it's a bigger deal on 65 than I think people think sometimes. So you make sure you got it for 65. And SIE, it's definitely there. Uh, good dump sheet. I don't have a good dump sheet. The best year my I've seen for a dump sheet. Thanks for joining us on LinkedIn. Uh, we uh, broadcast LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, and YouTube and Twitter. Jeremiah, the best I've seen is actually Brian's cheat sheet, he calls it. And it's in his quick notes. And you can get that for, I think, about 40 bucks. Is that right, Brian? 40? Oh, the, the downloadable PDFs, yes. Yeah, the downloadable PDF. He's got, it's kind of, I kind of think of it, Jeremiah, I'm dating myself. I don't know if you guys still know what cliff notes are. Cliff notes are, you know, these little things you used to buy, like if you had a class. And I don't know, it's probably 40, 50 pages. But as part of that PDF, it includes the practice file from Brian, his 66 practice file. But he has a little, uh, I think you call it cheat sheet. Is that what you call it? I don't like that name of it. Definition of person's cheat sheet. Yeah, yeah I don't like he calls it cheat sheet because Jeremiah, I'd hate you to be at the exam and it says cheat sheet. And you, you, know, you got it somewhere in your person. Leave it in the car. Leave it in the car. But what I think is very nice about that, uh, Jeremiah, is you can actually, uh, I, what I do when I'm tutoring people and they bought Brian's uh, cheat sheet, I make them put their name in the box, like where it says natural person. I said, Jeremiah, let's put you in there. Agent of broker dealer, let's put you in there. Uh, Jeremiah, what's your firm? Is it a BD? Is it an investment advisor? And then I use that to kind of go through that I'm, a flow chart, if you will. I'll call it a flow chart. So highly recommend that. Highly recommend that. Uh, our Kaplan has a version called Quick Sheets, but it doesn't have a, a flow as uh, Brian's cheat sheet does. So that's about 20 bucks, but that's just not really organized in terms of flow. It's just, you know, a data. You can also Google and there's other people who've done that. And you can see what they've done as kind of a, get some ideas. It doesn't lend itself as well as uh, other exams to a data dump sheet. It really doesn't. You're absolutely right. Uh, I'm not sure, Clyde, what you're asking. Two and 20 is for private equity, venture capital, and hedge funds. Yeah. So those are private partnerships, and they charge 2% of the assets under management and 20% of the profits. That's right. And so, you know, it's based on the performance and assets under management. It's certainly not monthly. I don't think you're going to get asked on that. You know, it's, it's usually you would get an annual report from your partnership, which is called a K-1, and they do a mark. So that's called a, by the way, I think the bigger test question, Clyde, is not 2 and 20. It's that they're organized as private partnerships, meaning to invest in those, you need to be an accredited investor. They're offered under what's called Reg D. So if you don't have a million dollars net worth, exclusive of a personal property, your house, primary residence is what I should have said. Uh, you don't make 200 grand for the last two years. Expectation of that this year, 300,000 finally jointly. Yeah, uh, no part, no private partnership for you. 63, Jeremiah. So 63 is your cheat sheet, and you have a cheat sheet for 63? Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's probably the same. I think it's the same because the, the Uniform Securities Act template is the Uniform Securities Act template. No matter whether you're taking uh, 63, 65, 66. I, Jeremiah, I just had somebody who missed their mark on the 66. And I said, well, why don't you go see if they'll let you take a 6365? Because that's basically the equivalent. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I, you know, Brandon, like sometimes, you know, I, I, I don't understand when somebody is giving me grief. I'm kind of like, gee, you know, you get what you pay for and you didn't pay for anything. So, you know, <laughs> so thank you, Brandon. Uh, I don't want to be rude, but sometimes I have to remind people that the, the, the channel is self-serve. It, you know, you're supposed to find your own stuff and put it on your tray. It's not my job to interact with you in a half a dozen emails about where to find things. Uh, so, Brandon, thank you so much. Uh, tonight, Clyde, every, we end every live stream with a 30-minute, a draw for a 30-minute coaching call. And your 30-minute coaching call can be whatever you'd like. We can talk about the 63, whatever you want to talk about, uh, developing a study plan. You can find some replays of those coaching calls. I have a whole a playlist on replays of tutoring, of classes, and coaching calls. Good evening. Long time no see. Another victorious hey, 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 in. Yeah, boy, if you want to know some stuff, uh, there's a knowledgeable person for you. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate referrals. Love referrals. You know, I think our business, you can overthink our business a little bit. Some people you know, don't get it. People pass. They're happy. They don't pass. They're not happy. So, you know, I, I used to hire instructors and I was hiring this guy one time. He said, well, how important is it that people pass the exam? I go, that's pretty damn important. That's like, you know, it's like, that's like number one. You know, so. uh. Woo All right. Well, man, let's get this last victory under your belt, man. 
Let's get this last victory, Jeremiah. Uh, I think sometimes when you suffer that initial misfortune of missing the mark, it tastes sweeter the next time. And I think it's really a positive indicator of your success in our industry because it, it you, you're not only going to pass the exam, but you're passing a test of resiliency. So, you know, somebody said, can you tell me some good stuff? I can tell you that one of my best brokers, people invest with you because they like you and they trust you, not because you can pass tests. So I had one of my brokers, he took the thing, Jeremiah, five times. And he used to go out to people and say, if anybody knows this stuff, it's me. I took the test five times. <laughs> he used it as part of his presentation. Again, so, you know, I wouldn't let it bother you. just got to keep at it, right? Keep at it. Most firms are pretty forgiving if they know you're working and, you know, they can see the work and, you know, we missed the mark. So this guy today who missed his mark, I was, I told him not to get too panicked until he talks to somebody at the firm about, you know, what's going to happen. 57, Ben, good job. Good job. Woohoo! I'm trying to get more up there, Ben. I did get permission from Notman to put that 57 practice exam up there. Uh, I'm trying to get SDC to give me permission because uh, Kaplan doesn't offer the 57, but uh, I got a, a call from, you know, senior persons at Kaplan want to meet with me Monday, and I didn't know they were paying attention to my channel. And he said, I saw that Notman thing up there. And I go, oh, well, you know, <laughs> what can I tell you? you know, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm an independent contractor at Kaplan, so I'm not Kaplan boy. So I'm glad to hear that, Ben. A better sense of volume limitation. Well, it's pretty straightforward. The, Nico, the three, are you, I thought you are taking, what test are you taking, Nico? Try and put what test you're taking so we know how important it is. But I think a good way to remember it is one, four, four. That's exactly One, right. four, four. You can sell 1% of the outstanding stock or the average of the last four weeks trading volume up to four times a year, up to four times a year. And it's whichever is greater. One of the times it's actually whichever is greater. So, you know, um, that's how I would remember it. I mean, that's a recognition style test question. Well, you, you you might have to do practical application depending on your test, but primarily on the SIE, that would be recognition. And uh, seven, I think I could give you something where there's a 10 million shares outstanding. You take 1% of that, that's 100,000. Then I give you the, hour, the last four weeks trading volume. You uh, total up, you divide by four, and then you would tell me, that form, by the way, Nico, is called Form 144, and you have to file that at or prior to the sales. So that should be a give me. I think as uh, test questions go, that should be a layup, I think. What do you think, Brian? Yep. No doubt. SIE. Yeah, it's mainly recognition. Yep. So 65 in Kansas. Oh, those 69s. Ugh. Yeah. Um. You know, I am, so I just, I, Nathaniel, I'm just going to be honest with you. I am more of a fan of the Kaplan QBank and the Test Geek as a paid supplement. If you buy the Kaplan QBank and you buy Brian's supplement, that's a little cheaper than the Achievable. Good news, you passed. That's fine. Uh, my, my biggest issue with Achievable is correlation to the actual exam. Exactly. So I am not comfortable that if you get a score on, achievable that you can that you say hey dean i got an 85 achievable i'm going to be good tomorrow i'm not comfortable with that and that makes me leery because i know that with like brian for example i know that what that score is is going to you know reflect where you are intellectually and what you're going to score in the exam so that would be the only thing i would say uh tomorrow you just got to be confident in your answers don't change them and uh with a score like that i i think you should be good i think you should be good but again uh too late right now you just need to get, get some good sleep tonight nathaniel be well rested so your reading skills are in top form for tomorrow. Uh, any last minute things you'd say about the 65, Brian? I think it's kind of bon chance, mon ami. You know. Investment vehicles. I think, uh, Nathaniel, a lot of people uh, under rate are, you know, don't put the time and effort into those investment vehicles. So it'd be interesting, Nathaniel, what you your missed last time. Did you get the regulations pretty good and miss the investment vehicles? That's how most people miss the mark is on the investment vehicle side. So uh, open end, closed end funds, huge. Yeah. Mutual funds are huge. Tomorrow morning is kind of. <laughs> well, Nathaniel, I think Brian just hinted investment vehicles. I would start with mutual funds, Nathaniel. So if you have some time, you can't overdo it. You can't be, get tired. Tired and tired is not I'm productive. Yeah. So something low key. Um, if you have like a, some light note reading, 
if you have a uh, quick sheets or you have uh, Brian's quick notes, if you, if achievable has something like that, like yeah, uh, STC has what are called crunch time facts. So I don't know if uh, Brandon, the guys at achievable have a, uh, something like that, but whatever you're doing, keep it low key with a focus on investment vehicles. And then I, I can't stress enough. Biggest thing is to get sleep. You got to get some rest. You're welcome, Klein. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Woohoo! Uh, I don't have as many memory aids for the 66, unfortunately. I mean, there's the ABC, right? ABC, do I give investment advice? Am I the business of giving investment advice? Do I want compensation? There's late. You know, lawyers, accountants, teachers, engineers are excluded from the definition. Uh, I can't think of many. What do you think of the others, Brian? Yeah. It's a slog, yeah. the hard way. I would think it's the hard way, unfortunately, Jim. Well, Jim, I, what I always tell people, I always like you to know everything. But I always say it's better to know the state than the SEC rules if you can't learn both. Because remember, it's NASA. It's the states that are making you take a test on this template. So, you know, would I like you to know everything? I would. But, you know, given that you only have so much brain space, you're likely to encounter more questions about the Uniform Securities Act template than you are, you know, federal stuff. So do right. um, you have anything to add to that, Brian? Yeah, I yeah, I it's heavy state. Yeah, I, I have a few more things to say, but this is probably not the right for. Okay. okay, so <laughs> you got Brian's email. You got Brian's email. There you go. <laughs> That's the best one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Brian Tudor. <laughs> yeah, Brian is a tutor and he's uh, ninety dollars an hour, which I think is a great deal. But uh, sometimes he'll tell me that rather than tutoring, he'll you know talk to you, and he'll say, well, "Listen, you can buy my course for the ninety bucks." So buy my course. <laughs> I'll talk to you. So that's that's maybe, why my maybe, tutoring is so cheap. You know. There you go. So maybe the video. Maybe you give Brian an email or a call and say, "Hey, Brian, last night you hinted at some stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, how about sharing it with me?" <laughs> I think particularly on the 63, Nathan, I'm usually not a big fan of doing uh, lots of practice questions to try and learn. What I mean is I always think on other exams, 63 being the exception, that you should lay some base. Once you think you've laid some base knowledge, then do some practice questions to see what your retention is. And then as you get towards the end, then start doing practice tests. But on 63, I believe in doing just as many practice questions as you can. I would just be rifling through those things, as many as you have in your possession. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, the 75 minute time limit on the 63, um, you know, you get, you read the question, read the last sentence first, if they're long winded, take your best shot, mark it for review if you have to and move on. You can't yeah. overanalyze these things on the 63. Yeah, I think neither 63 timing and then there's not a lot of performance opportunity. So, you know, it's not like you can be willy nilly about, you know, signing things to the universe. In longer exams, I say it's not worth burning up brain cells. So, Guest B, a sign of the universe, move on. Not on the 63, not on the 63. You get two sheets, Brady, of uh, scratch paper. Two sheets of scratch paper. It's a dry erase. I don't think it lends itself well to writing on the back, but no. I suppose you could try. I think you um, can, yeah. So it doesn't lend itself well to that. Dry erase. Yep. A dry erase, uh, you know, I always tell people I like a fine tip dry erase pen because they're using the, the thing. And depending on your exam site, you know, don't say Dean said this or, you know, play dumb. There used to be people being confused. I would bring my own and let them look it over and I'll donate it. Because what aggravates me, Brady, is if they give me some smushy dry erase pen that's been used, you know, 2,000 times and it, you know, doesn't have any ink in it. Well, Ruby, as we just said, we gave kind of our advice to, uh, I think it was uh, whoever else would just a minute ago was talking about 63. Do as many practice questions and practice finals as you can. So practice, practice, practice. So Brian's showing you some things that are really important. The 63, methods. these are the two most important things. The, whoops, sorry, I got, got me. <laughs> there we go. Right. Uh, yeah. The persons, that's broker dealer and agent specifically for 63. You remember? IAR a little bit, but mostly yeah. broker dealer and agents. Yeah. And the ethics. And the ethics Love is. It. Not no so breakpoint sales, no churning, yeah, exactly. don't lie, cheat, or steal. And then Ruby, remember, you're, as an agent, a natural person, living, breathing human being. Your firm is not. Yeah. Uh, know about BD, registration of the BD in the state. 
and you as an agent in the state. Yeah, good job, Brian. That's a that's yep. a great great two areas to focus on. Yeah, I, I I don't know if it's right or wrong. If it works for you, Justin, I'm I'm a fan for it. So, I mean, I I don't want you to be doing too much so much of that. You can't get the quantity of practice questions you need to get in. So. You know, um, but that sounds like I don't think that's wrong uh, as long as you're not running into a time constraint here where I'll make the argument. I'm not that kind of person. And here's my argument. So I'm not dissuading you, as I said, it's a buffet. But uh, Dean is going to do practice exams and I'm only going to go over the questions I got wrong. Correct. And the advantage of that, Justin, is I'm going to be able to go through six times many more practice questions than you are if you're doing one and looking it up or one and going over it. So that would be my only thing. As long as you're getting the quantity and doing that that you need, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. However, my recommendation and the way I do tests is I don't study things I got right because I assume I already know them. Counterintuitive, I'm trying to find things I don't know. So I had somebody tell me they missed 50 questions and they were upset. I go, no, that's great. See if you can miss 100 tomorrow. Missing questions is part of the process. That so is. I just think you're going to be able to miss more questions if you're not doing that would be my only thing. What do you think, Brian? Absolutely. It's trial and error. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. Hey, 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 kudos. Kudos. Thanks for coming back, uh, Victorious Test Takers. We always love you coming back and giving, uh, filling up the room with uh, some good energy, some good chi, as my Chinese friends call it. So, uh, kudos. Uh, I told you as well, and we have those people in the house. Glad to be done means they've done everything you're probably doing on the journey you're on. And as I said, uh, you can talk to them in chat. You don't have to talk to Brian and I. And uh, hopefully they confirm what we said. You know, sometimes I joke with people. They say, well, really? You know, I'll tell them something about what's on the test. Like, really? I said, no, I'm lying to you. I make my living misleading people about what's on the exams. I'm joking. But right, so you need confirmation. And sometimes you can get it. Trifecta. Right on, Al. Hat trick. I call it the hat trick. The trifecta. Triple crown. ETF is a hedge. I like that. That's good debrief. Let me make a note of that. Gold ETF. ETF. Yeah. So not the actual physical metal, just the ETF. Well, that's an easier way to do it, certainly. Uh, lots of prudent questions. That makes sense. Thanks, Al, for the debrief. Thanks for popping in. Uh, Al is in the house. If you got anything you want to ask him, feel free to do so. I'm a big fan of old-fashioned note cards, so call me. Uh, I'm embracing this now, Justin. I, I have haters, hard to believe. You know, Never had haters till I got on social media. But uh, there's a derogatory thing. They said, I'm I'm the old dude. So finally, I said, you know what? I kind of like that. I'll be the old dude. So I'm an old dude. And I know that a lot of people like Quizlet. But I'm an old-fashioned Justin. Buy a 4 by 6 deck. I like to have my 4 by 6 deck with me when I'm studying, when I'm watching videos. And I'm always looking for what I call uh, flashcard fodder. Like that 144 thing. There's a nice memory aid trick we did on the board. So, you know, I'm I'm a big believer in making those note cards. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've had a couple of students went overboard. I mean, oh my God, they had stacks and stacks of flashcards. Um, and I had to tell her, well, you know, be careful. You don't make flashcards on stuff that you don't need flashcards on. But, uh, you know, the three styles of questions you get on the, all these exams are recognition, practical application, and judgment. And you can't really make flashcards for judgment questions, but boy, that flashcards are great for recognition, right? So you shouldn't be giving up recognition questions on any of the exams. Practical application. So I give you an example of that I told uh, Nico that 144 is primarily a recognition question, but on seven, we could make you do practical application. In other words, give you the scenario, make you figure it out. So, you know, that doesn't lend itself with a flashcard. I still make flashcards for those uh, practical applications. So just in my own mind, I have a working model of what I'm going to be required to do, whether it's current yield or 144. So or parity, for example. Uh, so I'm not saying I wouldn't have flashcards for practical application uh, questions, but I would, but they'd be more working models of how I'm going to do something like parity, for example. Yeah, Candace, uh, general securities principal. I joke, Candace, babysitting sevens. Uh, I like the mini whiteboard. And I would add to that, Candace, that the best time for doing your data dump sheet or your cheat sheet, Brian's cheat sheet, I think his recommendation is you write it down once a day or twice a day or once a day. Yeah. Once a day. So your brain is best is at, just before you go to bed and just when you wake up. So what I would do is have your working model of whatever your data dump sheet is, whether it's, you know, you're trying to do Brian's or whatever, 
And then uh, I would try and do it free form and see how close I came to my working model and then try it again in the morning. If you did that every morning and every night, by the time you got to the exam, you'd be able to do that. So uh, depending on the timeline. So time horizon is kind of important because that'll start collapsing on you. But I love that idea. Mini whiteboard from the dollar store. I love it. I have one here somewhere that, uh, you know, I was thinking that somebody I'll use it like Brian's kind of thing, but and I never got around to it. <laughs> so. I got three whiteboards. I got one. Over I love whiteboards. You can see I got here, two behind I got me. I got a big one. Brian's coming over tomorrow. We're working on our uh, our podcast. We're working on some podcasts. And uh, when Brian comes over, I'll show him my big whiteboard. And I've been thinking, Brian, maybe we're doing some Las Vegas classes. You know, and uh, I don't know. I think my house is good enough. I mean, I don't yeah. know if people would be comfortable coming to my the, my place, but maybe we'll. Oh, well, absolutely. You know, I'll say, hey. <laughs> I always like to say. Las Vegas walk. in Dean's living room. <laughs> Cap of nine. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just thinking I, you can do that. I just think I would be a little yeah, nuts myself. You can write on both sides. But again, it's whiteboard. It's not. Yeah. So I don't like calling it scratch paper or because it's yeah. not paper. It's whiteboard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's correct, Nico. So I think somebody asked this to me on the channel the other day. So reinvestment risk. Uh, my answer, I'll let Brian uh, tag on here in a minute. Right. My answer is that reinvestment risk is associated with declining interest rates. So, Nico, we were talking about an 8% bond at par. You bought it new, it pays you 8%. And so that means every six months you're getting $40 per bond. And let's say now in the bond market, brand new bonds only pay five. And so you're going to be reinvesting the 8% at uh, four, uh, 5%. And that's what we call reinvestment risk, that you can't actually reinvest at that same rate of return. Now, the reason the zero coupon bond is going to be the correct answer is because you're not getting paid semi-annually. So that rate of return is locked in. So you've locked in that rate of return. You don't have any reinvestment risk. I would add along the way, you may have a bigger problem at the end, but during the life of the zero coupon bond, you do not. So yes, uh, two test points. Reinvestment risk is associated with a declining interest rate environment and zero coupon bond is how you lock in the rate of return. Do you have anything to add to that, Brian? Or um, uh, I could, <laughs> well, you go for it. I mean, you know, Brian has different ways, different so, voices are helpful. So this is how I always say, especially yeah. zeros on the series yeah. seven. It's important. There's yeah. always zero coupon bond questions. Most risk for zeros is interest rate risk and inflation risk. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Least, uh, investment, uh, least risk is reinvestment risk. Yeah. That's there it. you go. That's really all you need to know. There you go. Most, those two, least is that one. That's you it. Know, and by the way, that's why you want to get two. You might want to consider a paid supplement or the Kaplan Q Bank or having two of us because you don't want so many different voices saying different things. It confuses you. That's right. But one of the reasons Brian and I like to collaborate is we're not too far from each other most of the time. We might have some things we disagree about every once in a while, but it's not going to be something that, you know, completely different. And that's a good thing because that reinforces it gives you confirmation. That's where right. neither one of us are talking about it. What was we had last live stream? Somebody asked us about a RSO or something, something that we've never heard of. And I said, well, we never heard of it. <laughs> you know, it's not on the test. So. Uh, calculate two and 20 based on 100,000 uh, about laddered bonds. Well, laddered bonds, two and 20 wouldn't be about laddered bonds. Laddered bonds would mean I have to, bonds coming to a different uh, maturity dates. And again, that would protect me from interest rate risks, right? So I have some 19-year bonds, 20-year bonds, 30-year bonds, you know, so on and so forth. The kick two and the 20 would be, two would be on the assets under management and 20% would be the profit. So I don't know what I would say based on the 100 thousand. I would need more context to say well, what that is. is. That sounds like 65, 66 stuff. It really yeah, does. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird question. I need more context. Seven. Yeah, I need more context to that question. But two and 20... The two would be, I'll, I'll, in a hedge fund, you wouldn't have a hundred grand. You'd have more like a hundred million. So that would be, yeah. as the as the general partner, I'm taking two of the hundred million you got with me. And then off the hundred million, I make, a, maybe I make 40 million. I'm going to take 20% of the 40 million. So that's how I'd go about calculating. I, I, it's a weird, I need more context, but that's what we would do. Inherited IRA shows up a lot. It's 10 years if it's not a spouse. Uh, suitability is pretty uh, important, you're going to get 20 option questions, right? Generate additional income, a covered call, uh, protect the stock position, a long put. If you want to speculate, uh, speculation would be uh, 
long call, short call, long put, short put. You're either buying volatility or selling volatility or straddles or spreads. So you have some big, big uh, areas there, Jerome. Uh, you know, I like your one about two and 20. That's a particular question. Laddered bonds is a particular question. I'm with Brian. Laddered bonds are more of a 65 thing than a seven thing. But I'll believe you. I, I always believe debrief. Yeah. Inherit IRA is definitely there 10 years. And then suitability and depth on options, no surprise there. Those right. last so when you're when you're studying the nine option strategies, you can, you definitely want to know when to deploy them. Right. You know, why are you buying a spread or why are you selling a spread or why are you buying a straddle? Why are you selling a straddle? So, Jerome, thank you so much for that uh, debrief from the front. Uh, what is next? Your 66, I would take, I would be my guess. SIE. So, yeah, I don't think you're going to get the, the, that level of depth, Nico, on the uh, 63. Erica in the house. I just now see you, Erica. Did you showing up for the draw? You didn't uh, participate early, and now you're coming towards the end to see if you can win that coaching call draw. I'm teasing. I'm a big tease, so you should know that about me because a lot of times I'm teasing people. Don't think it's well, Aaron. I think with supplements, you get a lot of free supplements with Achievable. So I mean, you know, I have 71 videos. I think you know my my SIE videos could get you through the SIE. So yeah, I think so. I would supplement. I told you, Aaron, my big issue with the achievable is just the practice tests. So make sure you go to my SIE playlist. There's like six practice tests there, uh, including Brian's, and make sure you do Brian's. I have had a, a company called Mometrics, Aaron, that asked me to review their new SIE release. And as part of that, I put their practice exam up on the uh, the channel. And that was the second one there. And the guy got a little nervous because he didn't score so well. And then he said, well, what about this is compared to Test Geek? I said, no, Test Geek is spot on. This is not so spot on. But, you know, it's practice questions for you. So make sure you have some practice questions. And I think, yes, achievable is sufficient. I would just supplement with some free practice exams. Um, and then, you know, I'm just putting out on my, uh, Brian and I are working on our Geek and Guru podcast. Uh, but I just am trying to learn the podcast uh, uh, logistics or infrastructure. And so I put up a, a practice podcast. I'm still going to let it go because, you know, I can't let perfect be the enemy of the good. But in there, I do, Aaron, talk about, uh, resources. And, you know, if you have, if you have the resource, I know when you're starting out, you may not have the kind of resources, but if you have resources. I don't think it's time to be cheap when it comes to these exams. So achievable is sufficient, but the work you're doing on the SIE is going to translate to whatever's next, your six or your seven. So I wouldn't be opposed if you have the 60 bucks or the hundred bucks or whatever to buy a supplement. You know, I'm probably going to recommend Brian as a, an SIE supplement. So if you have the money and it makes you, I think of it as insurance is what I would think that of that as, as insurance. A ladder bond question is bonds that mature. So I'll let Jerome answer, but it's the ladder bond portfolio is about reducing interest rate risk because you always have bonds coming due that you can reinvest at today's rate. And the hair to IRA is usually a question about 10 years to take the distributions. Would you add anything to that, Brian? We'll let, the, we'll let Ryan, we'll let Jerome answer you in chat. Uh, the have, inherited yeah. IR is also not an, uh, uh, penalized for prior to 72. Okay. That's one other thing I would uh, add to the okay. inherited. Uh, ladder bond is just a hedge against interest rates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ryan, I'm not sure what you're asking. The SECURE Act is on the test. So there's nothing to add to the SECURE Act except you are tested on the current state of affairs. What the current stuff is, is testable. So, yeah. People keep asking, is it on the test? Yes, it's on yes. the test. The test has been updated. Well, Cynthia, uh, I don't th think there's uh, a perfect transition plan, but uh, I would probably maybe, you know, how much work you did on the SIE, maybe just uh, start with options and see what more depth you're going to get tested on. Perhaps, what do you think? Transition, Brian, you got any ideas? I, now, what I, my first instinct, my gut instinct is, the same plan you use to study for the SIE. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Other, right? <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Don't overthink it. Test, test book, uh, textbook, practice questions, uh, supplements, practice finals. I like there it. There is I no like it. different and study plan. It's Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. I like exactly. it. Exactly. I like it. Now, remember, you can guess. You can guess. I mean, guess is count. So answer. I, I actually uh, believe, Ryan, that Jerome did the right thing. And I wouldn't go back. I would guess, unless I absolutely later on go, oh, let's go on. I know I got it wrong. And I know what the right answer. Then I could go back. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it and done with it. 
and I'm going to make it up elsewhere. I'm not going to start burning up brain cells or create a subset of these questions that I want to go back. You know, I said, I don't get wobbly. So I think Ryan did the right thing. Yeah. Oh, score for more is my little video on uh, straddles. I'm glad. Hate the eight is about spreads. There you go. Uh, Brian's dad, who said you buy for protection. I love it. <laughs> love it. You when I was 16, that was a like big, uh, like big advice to me. Well, uh, selling group members are not members of the syndicate. I think you said, Nico, you're taking SIE. I don't know who your provider is, but if you were taking the SIE and these are the kind of questions they're giving you, I'd be really kind of concerned. You might want to consider getting a supplement. I mean, it won't hurt you, but I mean, it's a lot of stuff. So when we're doing underwritings, uh, tomorrow I'm teaching a uni class and we're going to be going over underwriters. We're going to be talking about Eastern and Western syndicates, divided syndicates. I think the main thing I would know for SIE is syndicate members are at risk for unsold securities. Selling group members are not. And selling group members get a selling concession. And the selling concession is typically the largest individual component of the spread. So Brian's doing some board work over there. I'll give him his a space. There you go. Yeah, exactly what Dean said. These are the syndicate members who take on liability. These guys are just supplemental broker dealers helping to distribute or sell, and they do not take on liability. That's the biggest difference. Yeah. Liability versus no liability. Yeah. And so, yeah so, yeah. So, you know, it gets a little deeper on that, uh, perhaps in some of the other exams like 24. But I think that's pretty, pretty much it. Uh, tomorrow, Nico, I'll be doing a Muni Bond class. And when we're done, it'll be available as a replay. And I'm starting that class with the formation of a syndicate for a competitive underwriting. So you might want to check out that first 10, 15 minutes. And I'll be going in depth on syndicate formation. Thank you, Brian. I think of it, Nico, is network marketing. It's like a pyramid scheme, right? <laughs> and, you know, on Brian's uh, top of the pyramid there is that broker deal. Lead underwriter. Yep. <laughs> Remember all those? Yeah. You know, uh, it's a rite of passage. There's a lot of people that always remember their seven, right? It's kind of, it's a rite of passage when you come into the business. Yeah. Talking Hedge. Thank you, Brian. All right. Woohoo. All right. I love it. Our victorious test takers coming in, sending good, good energy. Friday. I like it. 79 should be good. That should be good, William. You should I, not be a risk. So I like it too. It's good um, well, Brian, we just talked about this investment vehicles, but I don't think you're a risk with a 79 on Kaplan. No, so no, I'm good. Lay the beast. Uh, let us know when you pass. Circle back. Let us know. Uh, like I say, I don't think you're a risk with those kind of scores. Ready to go. Well, I don't, okay, nope, I don't like the only reason. I mean, you know, I, I don't like those kind of socially pejorative terms. Uh, but there's heightened suitability for variable annuity. So one thing is nobody should ever buy a variable annuity until they've maxed out other all the other retirement plans they have available to them. So they haven't done that. They shouldn't be looking at a variable annuity. Now, assuming they've done all that, they still have a lot of money that they want to invest for retirement then we might recommend a variable annuity and then we need to be able to contrast that with a fixed annuity. Now, one of the advantages, I don't think it's the only reason, but one of the advantages to a variable annuity is you can annuitize and turning it into an income stream that you can't outlive. Now, they're not going to get too much in the weeds on that, but you need to know life only, gives you the largest monthly payment. And you need to know that uh, there's uh, when you annuitize that, that stuff, that payment is going to go up or down based on the assumed interest rate. And you have to be able to explain to somebody why that check is going up or down based on the air. Uh, 65, you want to add anything to that, Brian? I, well, I'm just sitting here thinking, I don't know of any scenario on the 65 where they're asking you to compare one to the other. Really? Okay. Well, there we go. Just know well, the variable. What I'm thinking is, you know, you got to know the characteristics of variable annuities, you know, tax yeah. deferred, not tax until distributed, uh, LIFO only, that kind of thing. You, yeah, just... I, Comparing the two, you know, if we want to sat, sit down at the bar and have a beer over that, I'd be more than happy to discuss those <laughs> yeah. things. But for test purposes, I, I, yeah. I don't know if I'd compare. Okay, no, but at 5411, I'm going to timestamp this, and I will put a video I have on variable annuities there for you. Uh, there's two. I'll put two. One is a coaching call. It's 20 minutes, kind of Brian's version of having a beer with my friend Caesar. Yeah, Caesar won the coaching call, and I asked him what he wanted to talk about his coaching call. He wanted to talk about variable annuities. So we spent 20 minutes uh, time about variable annuities. And 
The other version I have is a formal lecture. It's more like 45 minutes an hour. It includes equity indexed annuities that are on the 65 as well. So I'll put them both there and you can decide which one you'd like to watch. Uh, well, Jim, we said it's uh, not that I know of. I think the closest thing, uh, well, you can do super chat, Jim. It's not necessary. You know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm blessed. So there's no expectation that you need to do anything on the channel except take advantage of the free stuff. But there's uh, super chats. And then off the channel, we have our Zoom session tonight. That's also free. And we have office hours that are free for paid students. And we have classes available. But Jim, the easiest way to donate is just to do like a super chat. In this we're doing right now, you can hit super chat and you can put five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. If you give, uh, put 20 bucks in there, get Brian and I tomorrow when we're doing our meeting can have a beer on you. There you go. Uh, -boo -boo. Yep. Uh, just fine. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it done. Okay. We're coming up on our time for our drawing. Wow. Went fast. Yeah, Cheryl. I, 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 like I say, I, you know, I know the achievable guys think I'm a hater and I'm not, I'm just not as big a fan as achievable as other folks are. And, you know, maybe it's just because uh, I'm in love with Kaplan and Brian. So, you know, um, I don't know what to tell you about that. So I'm not comfortable. Sense. If you were asking me to recommend something as a standalone product. So this is my problem as well. Uh, more so on the seven. I don't know any of the people who love Achievable that are recommending people buy it as a standalone solution to anything other than the SIE. Uh, fine. But on the seven, I think it puts you at risk. And I think it puts you at risk with the correlation on the practice test. So I do believe in supplementing achievable with either free content, practice exams on my channel would be free content, or if you have the resources, a paid supplement like my friend Brian. Uh, Erica, reciprocal is not called the reciprocal rule. It's called the anti-reciprocal rule. It's not reciprocal. It's anti-reciprocal. And what it says, Erica, is I can't dem demand quid pro quo this for that. So... I can't say to a mutual fund, for example, hey, Erica, do you know I'm your top producer? Nobody sells more of your mutual fund than me, Dean Tenney rep. And did I tell you I can buy the securities in the portfolio for you? And they say, Dean, are you saying that if we don't give you some trading business, that you're holding hostage your mutual fund production, whether it's me as an agent or the broker dealer? If I say yes, I'm in violation of the anti-reciprocal rule. You know, the portfolio manager is supposed to be able to do business with any firm that gives them the best execution. So it's not called the reciprocal rule. It's called the anti-reciprocal rule. Anyways, I don't think on seven, I don't think that's a big deal. But on 24, it certainly is. And on nine and 10, it certainly is. All right. I think we're getting close. Yeah, the test has been updated. There you go. So it's updated. We, I don't know how many times we've got to tell you that. Okay, so the word in the chat is going to be podcast. Uh, we're working on our Geek and Guru podcast, so the chat is podcast. If I miss you, I'm just finishing up the chat here. Uh, let me get out our randomizer. Okay, let me get my, I'm sorry, it looks like I, I, I stopped it, so uh, we're going to have to re-enter it. If you already put it in, re-enter it again, because I, I blew it. Oh, no, I didn't. I got it right here. Can you guys see it, though? I don't think you guys can see it. No. So let me, I got to figure out how to show this thing up here. Be patient, be patient. Come on, baby. Can you guys uh, see it yeah. now? Uh, kind of. Well, I'm going to hit draw. It's just, oh, okay. me, yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that. Get rid of this. So hold on. I got to go back and get rid of this. Try. Where is Eric? I'm trying to get rid of Erica's comments. We get a clean look at this thing. Oh, hey, Jim, thank you so much. So we got 10 bucks from Jim. Thank you so much, Jim. In Vegas, that probably will still get us two beers. <laughs> you know, boy, I was surprised how cheap, much cheaper beer is in Las Vegas than it is uh, 
San Francisco. In San Francisco. All right, here we go. So we're drawing. Um, who won it last week? Whoever you are, you're not available to win. You have to sit out after you win. Drum roll, please. Da, da, da. Nico, all right. Oh, there you go. So, uh, Nico, uh, you just um, send me an email. Let me put that back up here for you. Let me get back over here again. Let's put that over here. And you send me the email, and I will, I'll put my email back up here in just a sec. And I will uh, send you your confirmation and your uh, Zoom invite. There we go. There's my email. All right. Anything else uh, before we call it a night? Nico is the winner of our drawing. If you're uh, attending the Zoom overtime session, that's 15 minutes from now. You should have received your invite for that. And I'll see you over there. And what we do in the chat is you put in what you'd like to talk about. We knock it out in order. It's uh, 45 minutes. We may or may not get everything done, but we'll be as much done as we can with 45 minutes. Brian, thanks so much for participating. I'll see you tomorrow. And we'll spend our friend Jim's $10 uh, on uh, cigars and, and beer, adult beverages. <laughs> All right, everybody, remember, yes. inch by inch, your exam's a cinch, and you take the test. Don't let the test take you. Woohoo!